Hello gorgeous friends and welcome back. So a long time ago, I started a series on YouTube in which I recreated the makeup in a more wearable fashion of video game villains. So recently I had the idea to expand it into any sort of characters at all from video games. So today I'm going to recreate Aerith's makeup from the new Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm going to try and avoid giving any spoilers in this video, but also like the game has been out for like 23 years. Let's not get too carried away with ourselves. So I'm going to try and get this makeup as close as possible whilst also still paying attention to the fact that, you know, my face is very much a human face and not a CGI face, despite how sad that makes me. <laughs> so Final Fantasy VII has been an incredibly important video game to me in terms of like what I gravitate towards in terms of my personal style and the stories that I really want from an immersive universe video game. And I'm pretty sure that other people feel the same way that I do because Square Enix would not have remade it if it wasn't such a hugely popular and important piece of video game history. All right, so I am fresh faced. I do in fact also have a little bit of fake tan on. I don't know why it always picks up on my knuckles, but like the rest of me is nice and bronze. Okay, let's try and recreate Aerith from Final Fantasy VII's makeup. And not the original with the screwdriver arms. <laughs> So firstly, what I'm actually going to do is tackle my eyebrows. Now I'm just gonna pick up a little picture of Aerith to make sure that I am actually completely following this to the T. So, oh, she's so pretty. Look at her tiny little features. So realistically, it's about creating these large green eyes that have lots of dimension in them. I don't have any green contact lenses at the moment because we're in lockdown. So I'm gonna use makeup to try and make my eyes as green looking as possible. And I'm also gonna style my hair a little bit as well. So let's get started with the eyebrows. I'm literally just going to create a nice thin, not really arched brow, but slightly curved. So instead of my usual up and straight out carrying on bitch brows, I'm actually going to create this nice sort of soft flattening to my brow. I usually go for a fierce femme fatale brow. That is not the look we are going for today. So taking my Zoeva 317 wing liner brush, I'm actually just going to go into Dip Brow Pomade in Taupe by Anastasia Beverly Hills. So it's quite sort of like a skinny brow as well. Very, very natural, definitely not an eyebrow to take over the world with. More like an eyebrow that will cause a sort of three-way bisexual love triangle. So it kind of comes out to the edge of her eye here as well, which is a little bit different to my normal eyebrow shape because I love these massive long flat brows that just go up. Nice and soft and fluffy, but still quite defined. And to keep my brow hairs in place, I've just run a little bit of NYX Tinted Brow Gel in blonde, just through it, just to keep them, as I say, in place. <laughs> so I do my eyebrows before I do my skin and that is just because at the very end I can always go in and fix the shape if I need to. Because I have such a little brow it's easier if I make a huge mess up to just take them straight off and start again rather than having to redo all of my foundation underneath them. Okay so let's tie my hair out of the way so I can get right into my flare. So, because Aerith is in fact a CGI person and not a real human female, she's CGI, so she doesn't have things like texture and pores and fine lines and wrinkles and age and sun. So I'm gonna go straight in with La Creme Concentrate. I am very undecided about this stuff if I actually like it or not, so I don't know. Do any of you use Embryolisse La Creme Concentrate? Because I just don't know if I like it yet. So for foundation today, I'm just going to work my way through a couple of samples that I have. So I think I'm probably going to do the MAC Pro Longwear NW18. So this look isn't going to be super heavy with contouring or bronzer or anything because it looks like she has a pretty flat, even skin tone. I like to work from my forehead down. I don't know why, it's just this old trick that I've been doing for years and years and years. Everyone has their own way of doing their face. By all means, start at the area you want to. So as you can see already, my foundation is going over my eyebrows, but that's absolutely fine because I can go over them again at the end. So the original Final Fantasy came out literally in 1997, and I cannot believe that it's actually been 23 years. Time has been flying like there's absolute no tomorrow. I would absolutely love if they started remaking some of the other Final Fantasies as well. I would love, absolutely adore a Final Fantasy IX remake, but I highly doubt it will happen because it will probably be like, 2044 before we even get there. Seeing Kuja in his little like 
dragon skin bikini taking down Burma would be absolutely insane. <laughs> so to keep this look quite natural, but also highlight my features where they need to be highlighted, I'm not going to contour, but I am going to pay a little bit more attention to my highlight placement. So what I'm gonna do is just go in with my absolutely favorite concealer in the world, the Infallible More Than Concealer by L'Oreal in the shade 324 Oatmeal. And I'm literally just going to put this up the nose, up the nose, <laughs> on the side of the nose to try and pinch my nose a little bit more. Aerith has the most tiny nose. I'm sure she can't actually breathe through it. I'm going to try and keep that very pinched like so. And then also underneath the eye and a little bit on the top lip as well. So who has actually bought the Final Fantasy VII remake? Who has been absolutely loving it? So as soon as I got it, I literally bought it on that digital pre-download on the PlayStation Store. I was thinking about getting the deluxe version, but I was just like, do you know what? I just actually want to play it like immediately as it comes out. And that's what I managed to do. And I literally sunk immediately 45 hours into it. I'm just going back in and completing it now on hard to try and get all the extra little bits that I missed on the first playthrough. So because Aerith, I believe is quite young, I want to say that she's 19. I don't actually know. I think she's either 17 or 19. Very, very young to be going around the world gallivanting. So I'm going to assume that she has quite a dewy looking complexion, especially if she's not really got any sort of like contouring or bronze about her skin. So I'm going to take a little bit of a loose highlighter. I'm going to take this color here. This is by Cassie Lomas Makeup Artist B Cosmetics in the shade 6037A Supermodel Sheen with a Morphe Y11 brush. And I'm just going to shake off the excess just to really give a very, very subtle, but like youthful glow to the skin. So I'm concentrating it in a V shape on the face. So something in this sort of an area here, all these highlights here to create that really tucked in V small shape that I don't have, that all CGI women can have. So I'm going to do this before I powder so that when I do powder, the highlight will be taken down to a much more natural skin level glow. I'm gonna pop a little bit on the top of my lip as well in the Cupid's bow. So I actually have a new powder to try out today, which I'm very excited about. It is the Ben Nye in the shade Fair. So if you're anything like me and your under eyes crease like there is no tomorrow, here is a tip to try and make your under eyes not crease and for the makeup there to last all day. What you wanna do is take a fluffy brush, a tiny little fluffy brush, dip it into your loose powder, shake off the excess of your brush and literally press it underneath the eye right into the areas that cause creasing. There is absolutely nothing like natural and all organic about the way that I do my makeup. I literally paint like a showgirl and I want my makeup to last when it goes on. So that's why I do this trick. And then I'm going to do the same thing in any of the areas of my skin that move quite a lot. So that's beside my mouth in these sort of fine lines here. And also on the side of the nose, down on the chin, and underneath the tip of my nose as well. And now I can go in with a bigger powder brush and set everything else. Oh, I do like the way this powder is behaving. Gives it a slight bit of color for that little bit of extra coverage as well. So now instead of it being a blinding highlight, it's a lot more of like a natural skin highlight. Stunning. So this is what we have right now. And I'm going to go in with my eye primer now. So I'm going to be using the Painterly Paint Bot by MAC Cosmetics, one of my absolute favorites of all time. And I'm literally just going to apply just a little bit all over the lid and up to the brow. You don't actually need to use a lot of the paint pot for it to do its job either, which is quite nice. Unlike concealer, I always feel like if you're just going to use concealer, you end up using quite a bit. So there is absolutely no denying that Aerith has massive green eyes. Now they are this sort of like aqua color with a dark ring around the outside. She's got a little bit of a crease going on and also a heavy lash line. So going back in with the same highlight that I used on the cheek, I'm going to set my entire eyelid with this highlighter color just to help my eyes gleam that little bit more. This is a lovely, just like shimmery neutral color. I feel like it's quite similar to my skin tone whilst also still being like an impressive shine. You can immediately see the difference between my eyes. Like this side is now a lot more gleaming, a lot more sparkly, a lot more awake and looking that little bit bigger already. And we also wanna take the same sparkly color and just apply a little bit under the brow as well. I have no idea what my hair is doing today. I am wisping and crisping all over the place. Now, when it comes to the crease, I don't want to overly define it, but I definitely want to give an idea that my eyes are bigger than they are right now. So I'm going to take a little bit of shadow and just pull it right up slightly above the crease to give the effect that my eyes are a lot more rounded and bigger, a little bit bulbous, if you will. So I'm gonna go into the Smoke Show by ColourPop palette, and I'm just going to take the shade that's naturally already on my eye and pinching it up 
in the center. I'm not gonna take it all the way down at the outside towards the end of my eye. I'm literally just going to recreate the shadow of my natural eye. And I'm just gonna keep layering that up until I feel happy with the shape that I have created. And I think you can already start to see the massive difference between this eye and this eye. And to soften that up just a little bit, I'm gonna go back in with the highlight color we used earlier, the supermodel sheen, and just buff over this gray color, just so that it looks more like a shimmery skin tone. Ah, oh, the illusion of shadow. Now, looking back at this picture of Aerith, on the outer edge down here, it looks like she's got really thick eyelashes. So the way that I'm going to do that is use the same gray tone and just start to create that little bit of volume here, maybe a black and maybe like a dark purple to try and make my eyes really look green. Because if you think on the opposite side of the color wheel from green is the kind of red and purpley pink tones. So in order to make them stand out, I need that black darkness for the thickness of the lashes, but also for that little bit of purple to make my eyes go <gasps> green I've been exposed to Mako and I've got the holy materia in my hair <gasps> summoning green for the life of stream sounds like a runway theme rhyming everywhere and I'm not going to join it to the shadow up here I need that to be empty for all the darkness that we're going to create later and you just want to make sure that that's really blended softly and smokily as well so in the same smoke show palette I'm just going to go in with the shade let's do it which is this dark matte black and I'm going to start to add in more volume down here. So I've decided to use an angled brush, a really skinny angled eyeliner brush for this, just because I want to really concentrate where the darkness is going to be. Do you see how dramatic that is already? Oh, so exciting. Then I'm going in with an eyeshadow packing brush and just making sure that this is all blended very nicely. If this starts to get too dramatic in any way, shape or form, what you can do is take your loose powder and begin to blend into this shadow here just to really soften the edges. With this kind of a look, the devil really is in the really fine, tiny details. If you have lovely massive green eyes, you probably don't even have to bother with any of this. You could just literally put on a wig and off you go. Lovely. So now what we want to do is start to create this thick black liner. Now I'm not going to go in with a liquid eyeliner for this. I feel like the best option would be to blend in or to buff in a gel liner. Unfortunately, I don't have any black gel liner at the moment because, you know, coronavirus. So what I'm going to do is take a flat top brush and just start to buff in some black shadow all the way along my upper lash line. Now you can already see how big my, this eye looks in comparison to this one. On the outer edge of my eye, I am not really pulling it out. I've kind of smoked out the lower lash line from earlier, but I'm not pulling it out into a wing or anything like that. I literally just want a thick black smoky line. That's all we want for now. Honestly, sometimes these small intricate looks take a lot longer to do than these large dramatic ones you see. So now we've got these really large, doughy, smoky, dark eyes. I'm gonna take a little bit of Shadowy Lady on the same brush as before, the 212. So Shadowy Lady is a deep, smoky purple color. And I'm just going to press this close to the lash line just to give that black a little bit of a purple hue to help with making my eyes look more green. So now I have something like that. As you can see, I don't know if you really can, but when I'm looking in my mirror here, I do feel like my eye here is pulling a little bit more aqua than this one. This one's a little bit more gray until we put on the shadowy lady. Of course, the effect will never be as dramatic as if you are literally wearing straight up green contact lenses. At this point, I'm just gonna go back into my eyebrow and fix the little fadedness that my foundation caused, but it's a lot easier to do eyebrows when you don't have anything on your skin and you can literally go back in and touch it up rather than having to redo the whole thing. So now it is time for the eyelashes. Now I'm not going to wear any fake lashes in this look because I feel like that would detract from the whole point of creating these really structured round eyes to then just go and smash on a pair of massive lashes. So what we're going to do is curl the lashes, concentrating mostly on the lashes in the middle to help emphasize that doe eye look. Now I'm only curling the base of my lashes and I'm gonna release my lash, move it a little bit along and curl again, just so I really get that upward swirl and then just literally go ham with some waterproof mascara. Just before I finish off the lower lashes of the eye as well, I'm going to go in with a little bit of liner and just tight line my upper waterline in black. And on the lower lash line, instead of going in with a straight up white, I'm actually gonna go in with a concealer pencil. This one is the NYX Wonder Pencil in the shade Light Slash Claire. <laughs> I'm gonna line my waterline again to help emphasize making the eye shape bigger. See the difference between this eye and this eye? Absolutely wild, makeup is so powerful. So then I'm gonna go back in with my mascara and only concentrate on the lower outer third of the eye. And again, to help emphasize the sparkly twinkliness of my eyes, I'm gonna go back in with that initial highlight color, 
Where have I put it? Where's, where's it gone? Where has it... Hello? And I keep wanting to call this colour Kamasi Blue because that's a scientific dye. It's not called Kamasi Blue. It's called Cassie Lomas. I must remember that. So I'm just going to stipple this on the inner corner to help really bring light to that area to make my eye look even bigger and more sparkly. And as a final little finishing touch, taking the same colour, I'm just going to run it down the nose to help with that slenderization. That's a good word. Slenderization. And also do a little half moon on the very tip of my nose. And then I'm gonna pop a little bit more of my face powder over the top just to help soften it down a little bit. So now that the eyes and the face is done, it is time for the lips. If you have a little look at her lips here, they look very natural and very slim, but also very, very nude colored with a little bit of like reddy pink tone and a little bit of sparkle on it again. So I feel like this highlighter is literally going to play a part on the lips again because it looks so good. So what I'm gonna do is try and pick a nice neutral nude tone liquid lipstick and then add some shimmer to it. So I'm gonna take the MAC Retro Matte Liquid Lip Color in the shade Burnt Spice and just kind of feather this onto the lips. Something like this. Absolutely no overlining required. I'm gonna go in with my ring finger and just feather this out. And to tidy up my Cupid's bow, I'm just going to take a little bit of the pencil I used in my waterline by NYX. Oh my God, look how diddy my top lip looks. That's so funny. And I'm gonna do something very similar on the lower lip. I'm just gonna concentrate the liquid lip color between my fingers here. And again, go back in with my ring finger and blend that in. So to make them a little bit more peachy, because they are a little bit more rosy peach kind of colored in the image, my lips are very pink and very cold. So it's like a constant battle to get anything to look peach on me. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of that highlighter again and just press this into this color. So something like that. And just for the final little bit of contouring around the nose here and also to slim it up a little bit, I'm just gonna go in with Omega by MAC, which is just a nice little soft nude colored kind of cold tone eyeshadow. Pull a little bit under the brow at the front, pinching it off at the end. I also need to create that little bit of a bulb just by going lightly over here and underneath the tip too. And lastly, just to soften up that contour a little bit, I'm gonna go back in with my loose powder and just help dust it off. The higher you take your highlight up onto the side of your nose, the slimmer that your nose will actually look. And we want it to be so pinched, we can barely breathe. Stunning, so now that I am finished, it is time for me to put on my little outfit and also style my hair to as close as I can. And I will be right back with the final look. And this is the finished look. So sadly, I don't actually have a red leather jacket that would have really topped off the look. The hair, I think I probably could have done it a little bit better with as well. But honestly, creating her like volume here is so impossible. I literally have no idea how to do it, apart from literally like backcombing the crap out of my hair. I think it's actually turned out quite nice. It's very subtle, very day wear, but I think it's quite good for this little casual cosplay. Who knows, perhaps a material will fall out of my hair and I will cast holy to protect us all from the coronavirus, but probably not. If you want me to recreate any more video game characters, then please let me know in the comments box below. I have like a plethora of characters to choose from. I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing a couple from World of Warcraft next. So if you are an avid World of Warcraft fan and you love some of the makeup looks that they have, let me know in the comments and I shall pick out a few and let's see what we can create together. Co-creators, can I hear you? Okay, beautifuls, I will see you in my next video.